Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Affinity Legends of Wall Street Trading Room. Big, uh, big welcome to all. It is yet again Friday. It is another week has gone by of fun, fun and trading. And um, first stock we're going to look at is Save. Okay, there's a big gap and go down on Save. Uh, I've already put it on the whiteboard. Okay, already put it on the whiteboard. There it is, save. Okay, it's four stars. Uh, it is an either or, meaning that we're going to watch to see if it fades or if it rejects the fade because it's very close to support. That's why I'm calling it an either or. If it breaks support and starts to melt, then obviously the trend direction is, is key. Otherwise, if it starts to rally, then it can trigger a fade. That's save. Next one is win, because we're all winners here at the Affinity Legend of Wall Street trading room. Um, so here we have it. And by the way, guys, I need to remind everybody, if you have not signed up to our YouTube uh, page subscription, go there to subscribe. We, uh, we're trying to break uh, 1,000 subs uh, user subscription. Um, by the end of uh, this year, okay. So we're 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 sitting right about nine. How much? Nine fifty one. I thought it was more than that. Double checking this. We're sitting right at nine fifty one. Oh, nine fifty two. In Africa, we've gotten another one. <laughs> It's probably just Anafrio creating new emails and signing up. <laughs> oh, I'm buying it. I'm buying the emails. He's just setting up new Gmail accounts and subscribing to the YouTube page. Okay, so we have 952 subscribers, 90,000 views. We're trying to get over 100,000 views. And guys, by the way, also look at Emery. Emery did a, a German recommendation. So uh, definitely check that out as well. Um, so, Win Resorts, okay, Win Resorts uh, is right now at 67.48. It's got shock. It, it um, well, actually, it doesn't have shock because I'm not sure if this bar is right. But um, it, has a, it has a nice trend. 67.34 puts it below the prior consolidation. I don't like win uh, as much as I like save, but um, but I do like win if it gets below sixty-five dollars. And of course, there's a lot of room to sixty-five dollars um, in case it does get going. So I definitely uh, would keep win on your watch list. I, I I would say that it's probably in my book a three-star play, three-star gap. Um, Saunder, I'll, I'll give you the link right now. There it is. That's the link for everybody who hasn't already subscribed to our YouTube channel. There's really some great education on there um, as well. And there's going to be a lot more. I'm going to be doing a lot of our free workshops. Um, the internet marketing is changing. Uh, so you don't do as many live free workshops as you used to. You record them, put them online. People watch them at their discretion. It's a much more on-demand world. Yeah, baby, 9.53. We're getting there. Thank you, Gator. Appreciate it, buddy. Okay, so, um, all right, so we got win. We got, let's take a look at the other two. We got GE, Honeywell, and PGR, the three ones that we want to look at now. GE. GE, we bring good things to life. Um, guys, GE obviously uh, is is reacting well. It's already at 28.48. Now, guys, you know that I've called GE as a long term uh, a long term buy when it did that huge gap up. Okay, when it did that big gap up, this is called the Honeywell effect, right? So Honeywell did something very similar. Um, Honeywell um, 
when it when it announced that it was getting rid of all of its financial elements and just focusing on its core business, Honeywell uh, appreciated almost 80 percent. So when when GE announced what it was doing way back when, um, there was a great great buying opportunity when the market was crapping itself at at 24. Um, but then, of course, the, the thing that triggered GE back up was when that um, that private equity firm, whatever it was, invested in GE, and then the stock has just been on fire, which was a secondary reiteration of the call that we like GE long term. I think GE is still going to be up to about $60 by next year. Um, I think GE fundamentally, um, because of that Honeywell effect, will keep going up. But on earnings today, GE has the real potential to break out above 2850. Um, the high here was 29. Any break above 29, GE is off to the races. So this is a slightly longer term play. You know, GE core long 2x, right? But also from a day trading perspective. 2850 to 29 GE leads to a swing breakout above 29. I, by the way, on the 2x long, we called leaps. Leaps back in okay leaps on GE we called them back in what month was that April okay leaps back in April okay back in April and then we also called um, you know October October was the confirmation by a big firm investing October confirm core and liked again. <laughs> uh, so guys, I mean that this is I mean I, and by the way, I just I just think I mean great stock. Like if, if you're gonna hold a stock, GE, I mean you can own it, write covered calls against it. You can own the leaps if you, you're you don't want to occupy too much cash. There's so many good plays on GE um, that can be done. So I, I, you know, that's something that you should call me and speak to me, you know, as a broker, as a licensed registered rep. There's so many ways to play this one. Um, next, Honeywell, the Honeywell effect. Um, guys, Honeywell has a beautiful daily chart. I don't know what, what it's going to react on open, but usually when you have a buy setup like this on the daily, Honeywell will be a day trading long. Now it's got a catalyst. Honeywell buy setup on daily. Okay. So let's watch Honeywell as a buy setup on daily. And um, I mean that's my list for today. I mean I'm going to look at PGR. Thoughts on Yoku? We we saw that smoke when there was a little smoke. There was. Yeah, that's too bad. Remember we had that one on our dead cat list for uh, about a week and a half? Leave it alone. It's, it's a takeover, so. I think PGR is a good gap and go. PGR progressive. PGR gap and go or check mark. Okay, guys, and if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, take our class. Because <laughs> uh, PGR, gap and goes and check marks are things that Kenny and I have been trading and gap fades. These are things that we've been trading for a long time. Let's go to SYRG. SYRG. Guys, these are all stocks that came um, from earnings. SYRG. You know, my boy was going on about about Yoku, Yoku, Yoku. I mean, he's going to be he's going to be um, very upset that he was not able to hold his Yoku. I mean, he's like the, the you know Kenny, you know the guy that you're talking about. 
yeah. just gets overeats and overeats and can't hold it, but he doesn't buy it for any good reason. And then when it actually something happens to the stock, he's like, oh, my God, you knew I knew it. All right, guys. Let's see Yoku. Yoku. Oh, is it why? What is Yoku symbol? Y O K U. Y O K U. Yeah, he's gonna be. Yeah, look at it. It's already up to guys. Yoku is at already at. I'm the dyslexic trader, guys. I always screw up symbols. Um. Yeah, look at this thing, man. I mean, he was buying it down here. All over. Until he finally puked it all out. Sad. Guys, in trading and, and, and in the markets, it doesn't matter if you're right. It just matters how you play the game. If you, can, if you buy small and you can weather the storm, then you'll make money. All right. Um, last one. So S-Y-R-G. It's not about being right, guys. It's about being green. Um, here, beautiful daily chart on this SYRG Synergy Resources. Um, I'm going to put Synergy on here just because it's a buy setup. SYRG. Buy setup. Okay, and we're going to have to just watch that one. Watch, long watch. If it triggers above the prior day's high, then that's a long. Okay, that's buy setup rules. Um, next one. Oh, Mattel from yesterday, right? Mattel had earnings yesterday. Guys, this is the second, this is a day two call. I like day two calls. Guys, Mattel had a nice consolidation. I think Mattel is a good breakout. Because it didn't break down, now it triggers as a breakout. Actually, I think maybe I had the date wrong. Oh, it was after the market yesterday. Mattel was a good one. After market yesterday is good for a gap this morning. Um, guys, watch Mattel if it breaks out above that prior high. Otherwise, it's a good fader. So Mattel, I'm going to put a day trading, M-A-T, either or. Okay, and that's all about support and resistance. It was a, um, it, it was a, Mattel was a, uh, earnings after the bell yesterday. So guys, I think we got a pretty good list today. Market's going to open in one minute. We're actually open right now. So trade well, everybody. I'm going to watch Mattel here on the open. Oh, Lisa. Calling Baba. By the way, I, I have to say that um, Scott Scott made a great mention that 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 the market would gap down, and if you bought the pre-market gap down, um, you, you're very happy right now. And Kenny said any any gap down yesterday, any gap down on the market is a great buy. Guys, look at SAVE, right? It was the first stock we talked about as a short today, guys. This stock can't go up to save its life. No, I'm just kidding. Guys, look at SAVE. Let's see how this one's doing. This is a one minute. See if it rallies. So the initial move was down. See GE. GE, guys, GE, good. Doing what it's supposed to, guys. GE, one, two, three, continuation right on the open. Save working, guys. Save working. If it breaks below this five-minute low, save. UVXY, kids, keep an eye on this thing. It started to just spike down, spike back up. Market's kind of rolling over red here. UVXY. Guys, if you don't know, UVXY, nice indicator of what the market's going to do. Right now, we're flat, obviously. 
Not rushing. I saved killing it. Got my eye on Twitter right now. It doing a fade. TWTR. Just broke your one minute VWAP. Your multi day is right underneath there. Twenty nine seventy eight. But if it breaks twenty nine seventy eight, then you got a chance of a reversal. So keep an eye on Twitter. Again, I'm not a huge fan of short and Twitter anymore, but set no. I'm watching UVXY a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna probably dip into UVXY in a second here, but just a little preemptive kind of a gamble. I'd like to see a spike down again, to test that 3151, but I don't think I'm gonna get it. So UVXY coming near the highs of the day. Cover save, guys, cover save. All right, we got the UVXY, and I think I might buy more and want a little bit more here. UVXY over 32, using basically a 23 cent stop here. Or I might just sell it if it gets to 32 and a quarter pretty quickly here. All right, so far so good. UVXY. Again, this is pretty volatile. Always try to sell it on the offer as it just dipped right back to 32 in a second. Let me see if my sacrifice will work here. I'll sell some at 32.05. Oh, gone. All right, I just got a little bit, a couple of hunch. I just I had 300, I sold 100. This thing has been disintegrating at an incredible rate lately. So, again, it's a piece of garbage stock, but maybe people will be nervous over the weekend. There'll be some buying in it. And I might lose on this last, this 200 here. Guys, save was a great one, but you had to take it at the three minute low break. Okay, um, this is a possible re-entry as it bounces up to the three-minute low break. It is now below the moving average. This stock should melt. We've got to wait for a little trigger down on save. And then you can reload on this. UPXY not looking too good here. Yum Brands fading pretty hard. I guess they had some news this morning. All right. UVXY, let's see if we could get out of this thing without losing any money. Back to being pretty much a flat trade here. Guys, if, fade, if save goes back below 44, you got a great possibility for another move down like the first one. I think that Mattel's fading away here. I'm not really watching. Yeah, Mattel was a good one. It gapped right into resistance. All right, UVXY, we're back in the green. Let's see if we can get a move to break the high of the day. Guys, watch save. It's still a good trigger. If it triggers down, this is down, rally, bounce, 50% retracement, jig down again. Has no trigger yet. But look at it getting to VWAP. That red line is VWAP. A little bit late on the Mattel. Usually you want to break, get them as they break the five minute low. So much for that Cree long. Uh, I just bought a couple of hundred shares of UVXY basically at the open. And I bought another hundred at 32. I quickly sold that last hundred at 32.08. I still got just a couple of hundred here. Now you can't really trade options on the stock. They're, they're way overpriced, you know, unless you're anticipating a monster move, which if anything, it's going to be to the upside if this market ever decides it wants to go down again. But I'm in a I'm in full bull mode lately. I don't I think the market has seen it's down. Uh, we had our correction and I believe we're back into grind the shorts to death. And speaking of that, win. 
I'm sorry I didn't mention it, but I, I, I love any stock that's gapped down. All right, here we go. 32. I just sold another 100 shares at 32.14 just to sacrifice. Oh, and I caught the eye of the day there. And I guess got 100 left, you know. I'm going to make $100 on the trade pretty much. That's it. Still got Twitter on my radar for a possible short. And here comes our UVXY. Let's see if we can get to 32 and a quarter. UVXY, if you don't know, I'll tell you all, you know, if you guys don't know about this stock, this is the worst thing that's ever been created on the, in the history of mankind. This is a stock that's built to go to zero. Every every eight months, we have a small it's all spike. All that's evil in, in the world now. Yeah. Every eight months, we have a small spike when there's some nervousness about some bullshit that we the media makes us care about, like the demise of China in August, obviously. We spiked from 30 to 95 on this thing. And uh, three weeks later, it's back to 30 bucks. So it's built to go to zero. I could teach you a little bit more about it when we got some time, but down at these levels, it's really not the greatest short, even though it eventually it will be down at 20 bucks and then, and then they'll, they'll reverse split it and it'll be, uh, you know, it's built to go to zero. I know that may sound confusing to you guys if you don't know, but I'll explain it at, in detail later on. All right. I'm just looking. Oh, here we go. Here we go. 32.22. All right. Let's get 32.25 and then we might be able to break out a little bit. Again, I got a hundred shares left. I'm goofing around. You know, I bought the open just because I thought it's just way too cheap now for the for a Friday. Usually, they'll have a little bit of nervousness on a Friday after a monster day like we had yesterday. People want to take profits on their stocks. The S and P's will go down, hence the UVXY will have a small pop. If we get through 32.25, I'm looking to get to 32.40, which is the upper deviation band. So, but again, this market to me is done going down. I love the market right now. 90% of stocks have been buys on dips. And, uh, you know, I'm sticking with that until the UVXY starts spiking and holding green for more than two days. You know, notorious. Here goes save, guys. Secondary entry triggered on save. Come on, yeah. she goes, baby. <laughs> All right, thirty-two twenty-five gone. Let's see if we get to thirty-two forty. Come on, give me that stock. All right, come on, thirty-two forty. And uh, we'll be out of the other 100 shares. Keep an eye on Mattel, still fading. Is your 32.32, 32.33, 32 33.34. Offering out 32.40. Let's see if I can get it. Gotta make an extra seven bucks. I gotta recoup some of the money I bet on the Dodgers. Just kind of a hedge. <laughs> <laughs> I got smoked. <laughs> I didn't think the Mets. I didn't think the Mets were gonna do it. I want the Mets to win, but I didn't think they were gonna do it. So I, I went. I do that bit. too, Kenny. If I root for a team, I don't watch baseball because every time I watch, they lose. <laughs> Part of I said I'm not really into sports. No, I just realized very early on that if I watch the game, they lose. <laughs> hey, look, I might dump out of this thing if it doesn't break 32. Oh, 32, 38. Uh, I've got my finger on the trigger already. I don't if, if I don't get the extra three cents here, I'll be all right. Thirty-two thirty-nine on the offer. Thirty-two forty. Thirty-two forty. All right, guys. I covered Thirty-two forty. I'm the greatest trader in the world. Guys, look at Mattel, baby. That was a great fade. This is why I love one-hour trading. Because it's especially 30, 40, when it, it 30, works 40, in 16 minutes. 3240. 30, 30, 40. All right. There you go. Nice. Hope everybody jumped in that. Little I'm in the towel, man. There. I'm still short. A little chopping around the UVXY, but that's what it does. 
again, it's, when it, once it broke the one minute VWAP, I look for stocks to get up to a deviation band, which is your plus one deviation band. And uh, there you go. That's how you do it, kids. Uh, that was a little preemptive. Now, again, I will get back into UVXY if it goes green, because that means this market's tanking. And th when this thing goes green, it's generally good for a couple of points. Again, I'm going to be pissed off when I'm buying it back at 3280, because I just had it at 3180 and 32. But again, I just, you know, wanted to make, a, you know, $140 in my first trade of the day. So I save go. getting killed, man. Save getting killed. Save is still good. So there you go. For you players at home, there was the first call of the day. We bought UVXY. I believe I mentioned I was buying UVXY about 20 times. We were looking for 32.40. When it broke 32.25, we got the 32.40 and we're out. So there was a trade. Hopefully it was uh, something that you all jumped in on. Maybe your first trade of the day and now you're profitable and you got some house money to play with. Now you got 32.50. So again, I'm not a big fan of retrading the same stock. Again, when I win money, I look at it as a casino. I won, I could walk away from the table a winner and go get a drink and a massage. And, uh, but if it's obviously looking like it might want to go green here, I might be looking to buy it back, so. I see it's a good cover spot, but the trade is working perfectly. Okay, good cover spot at the double bottom. Emery, great trading, Emery. Larry could have ran it a little bit better. Mattel, great trade. L and save, save the day. Woohoo! By the way, if you were in the FEYE, I sold it pre market. You know, we held a couple of hundred shares because it had that strong close. Reversals are usually a good indication of sentiment change, at least for three days. Those are the only times I'll hold overnights again. And it worked. It doesn't always work, but it's nice when you get an intraday reversal on a beat down stock. Generally, the shorts and or generally the, the, the powers that be, I should say, want to screw the shorts even more and you get a gap up the next day this coincided with a uh, an upgrade somebody upgraded the stock uh, yesterday or, or this morning then and you know how I feel about analysts thanks thanks for the upgrade because we made some money on it but it doesn't really matter analysts know nothing by the way if you own Alcoa sorry <laughs> I just can't own uh, the stock. Kenny, which stocks did you call today? Because I want to mark up the scoreboard here. No, we just had, well, Wait, UVXY at the open. And I had FEYE over for the overnight. And that, that's it so far. I'm, I haven't done a thing yet. What about win? And, did uh, you call something on win? No, I just, just keep an eye on it because, you know, stocks that are gapped down in this market have been pretty damn good to be buying. But I haven't yeah, actually it's right started. At, it's actually yet. right at Daily View app. On but hang on, I got the Twitter here. Yeah, there, there's my here's my call right here. Twitter for the fade. Now you're getting. Sorry, it just broke my. It just broke my price. So I had a short on alert at twenty nine eighty, and it just broke it, and I didn't get any. So here it is going reversing. So keep an eye on this Twitter for a short. And UVXY is about to break the high today and go green. And I told you I'd be pissed off, and I am, because. I Guys, save stock. is good for lower. I know this thing. Save is good for lower. Head. There's another trigger. All right. Yeah, Emery, go to work, Twitter. buddy. Yeah, I just missed the Twitter trade. Again, guys, I trade for 12 cents a lot. So when I miss a, when I miss a trade by 12 cents, I generally don't feel as comfortable about getting in. But I'm going to see if Twitter can move back up to 29.85 and if it fails there then i will put a short in but right now it's uh you know again the future is being flat on a friday after a big move i didn't expect too much the only thing i did expect was maybe a little bounce in the uvxy because this has been a, 
a level that it's bounced off four or five times. By the way, again, let me apologize for Alcoa, whose stock is the fucking worst. <laughs> I cannot own a stock for more than three days to save my life anymore. Three, after three days, guys, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, notoriously, yeah, if the market's flat, UVXY will fade, but it already had to contango. It already been, it was, it's already been adjusted. So now, if the market was to stay flat for, let's say, you know, 10 more days, this will be at $25. I was just looking for a little bit of a, a pop this morning just because of the smoking it took yesterday. Don't ever own the stock for more than a couple of days. And that's only if this market is extremely weak. This stock is built to go to zero. And I know that sounds weird, but it's not a real stock. It's a, it's a futures vehicle that trades futures contracts. So every month, when the futures contracts expire on the VIX, whether the VIX is flat, down, or up, this thing will be adjusted down. So over time, it's built to go to zero. If you want to look at a 10-year chart on UVXY, the split adjusted price is 900000 and the stock is trading at $32. So if you love it at $98,000, Mr. Jones, you got to love it here at $32, dollar cost averaging. It's a product that's built to go to zero. And like I said, the guy that was short at 30 and watched it go to 90, he was probably thinking, but I thought it only goes down. If he was able to withstand the pain, three weeks later, it's back to $30. You know, you just have to be worried about the every eight months where the media wants to concoct some reason that we should be afraid of the market. You know, that's where it really comes down to. And 3280, not a bad spot if you did dump it there for your last trade and win is looking really good so anyway i like stocks that are gapped down on earnings because now that we're back in a bull market oh actually we never left the bull market oh my god look at the win trade i'm sorry mike you should have noticed this one ms wind pulled back to the one minute unable to break bounced a dollar 40. now again i'm not going to say i Saw it, took credit for it, nothing. I wasn't watching it. I just said, keep an eye on win because of the gap down. Look for it to get some strength. Because that stock looks like it's uh, definitely done going down. That thing hit 50 bucks a couple of weeks ago, which I wish I was still watching it. I would have bought some win at 50. It was one of my best trades about a decade ago when I bought that 50. And again, let me just apologize for Alcoa. I'm not selling it. Obviously, I bought it to own it till till I get my spinoff. And this stock just sucks. But I'm fully hedged. I, I sold ten dollar calls, eleven dollar calls, twelve dollar calls. So if wind continues to go, now that it's bounced off the one minute, I got a target of seventy one fifty one. Again, I'm very, you know, there you go. Mike knows what I'm talking about. Very particular with what I trade. You know, if I miss a stock. I just, I'm very stubborn, but that's what saves me from losing money. Very stubborn about chasing. If I miss something, screw it. By the way, you got your Twitter entry there. 29, got back to 29.85 there for a second. Now, as much as I think win could go to 71.50, I'm not doing this trade. I'm just looking at it, just pointing it out. Based off the one minute VWAP based off the earnings report and based on this chart pattern that I do like the last decent entry for me would have been 69.25 so I physically cannot buy a stock that I'm chasing a dollar even though I think it might get the 71.50 my discipline tells me you missed it move on yeah Twitter was a little bit better you got your spike back up it couldn't break out and 21. Wow, it actually went right back to 29.86. So that was your entry. And here's the reversal. 
So again, with the Twitter, it's a little bit difficult for me to want to be short the stock because I own it now. I think the stock's got, you know, 3250 written all over it, especially if this market hangs in there. But for a day trade, this is a day trade. Uh, there's a secondary re-entry on the save short. There's also this stock SGEN that's collapsing off of VWAP on the daily. The trend is good. I don't know what the hell Seattle gen genetics is, but I imagine it's some kind of genetic research company. So it's save Seattle. is continuing in its gap and go down. An SGEN possible short. All right, let's see if we get some follow through on this uh, Twitter. Again, it, it's we had a huge day yesterday. So what you, you got to expect is that you're just going to get a lot of back and forth today. At least for the first hour or so. You don't want to get chopped up, but take a look at the UVXY. It's not going away. So that's your indication that maybe this market's got some selling to be done. UBXY near the highs of the day again, your Twitter at the lows. So again, the perfect entry, they, it, you just got it. Now, if you're short of 2980, I'm already looking to cover right here. I'm a 15 cent trader, I'm an eighth trader. That's the way I made all my money my whole life. You know, a little bit different. Now I'm only trading, you know, three, 400 shares. When I was trading 5,000, 10,000 share blocks back in the day, it was a lot more exciting to make an eighth because you were making, you know, $1,200, $1,400 on every trade. But now I just grind out. I do three or four trades a day. I try to make my $300 with very low risk trades. And, uh, you know, I call it a day. And then every once in a while, we have a Friday, like two Fridays ago, where we had, I would say about 140 reversals. And the minimum you made on some options plays was 100% on your money. So, Again, those days only come around every 18 months. Uh, sometimes you'll never see a day like that where you're gapped down 250 on the Dow and by the end of the day you're up 250. You just don't see that too much. Yeah, I'm still sitting here on the yeah, UVXY. It's not going away. It's making me feel a little bit better if you're short the Twitter still. But um, if you're short the Twitter now, you want to put a, I put a tighter stop on it right at 29.72. You probably will get stopped out. But if, hey, if you're shorted at 29.80 and you, you know, it's at least you're making some money. Again, I'll take $5 if somebody wants to give it to me. That's the way I trade. Give me five bucks, I'm happy. And this will remind you, Alcoa sucks. My dad is pissed. I mean, I told him not to buy it before the numbers came out. It's amazing. I can make 100 good calls in a row. My dad always chooses the one that doesn't work. Then again, if he bought it at 885, well, he did buy 885, but he didn't buy any more. He bought more at 1080. <laughs> and that was his mistake. All right, here we go. UVXY going greenage here. Now, I told you I'd feel uncomfortable about chasing this, but let's take a look. There's your 3285 going green. I guess we had something come out at 10 o'clock. That's why we got the spike. So I'm not going to give it too much credibility yet. Let's see if it hangs above that 32.65 on the pullback. And there's your pullback. Guys, new low on save. New low on save, right? Consolidation. Oh, man. Press lower. Great gap and go down on save. And UVXY is a failure. Yeah. So this market is doing what I thought it would be doing, chopping back and forth. You know, and like like Justin, you said, the flatter you are on the market, eventually UBXY will be down because it's it's a piece of garbage. It's a 
it's the worst. It's absolutely the worst thing that's ever been created. I've never seen a stock this absurd. It's not a stock, Kenny. It's not a yeah, exactly. It's it's a zombie stock. All right, let's talk about dead. the winner, the, the FEYE, guys. Um, another dead cat stock that we picked off the trash heap and having a decent day. Obviously, I sold it pre-market. You might get some follow through here. If it stays above 30.38, which is your one-minute VWAP, it probably will gain some strength. And here's your win going up to that upper multi-day VWAP, I call it. Uh, you'll see, the more you hang with me, I'm going to keep pointing out how these algorithms trade. The reason the high-frequency traders and the algos make all the money is that they don't care when a stock pulls back 60 cents, whereas we're shitting in our pants, especially if you got some size on, you can't be feeling too good about it. But once the program is set, Generally, VWAP will give you an indication of what's going to happen. It's just, as people, as humans, we get spooked. Like, I believe wind just pulled back right from 70 and change to 69.45. So somebody probably said, oh, I'm getting the hell out of this piece of garbage. Next thing you know, it spikes to the highs of the day. I would not be surprised to see 71.41 on the stock at some point. But again, like I said, if I was buying this thing, it had to be a perfect setup. Also guys, I don't normally trade the stocks until they're, you know, reverse worthy. This is $3.50 from reversing, meaning it has to go green. That's the true reversal. If this thing was to go green today, forget about it. Chances are it could go up eight points on a monster squeeze. But if I'm going to play a dip, I'm going to play it off a one-minute VWAP. And that was a perfect scenario right there. So, again, I don't chase, you know. And I know some of you should be saying, if you think it's going to 7140, why aren't you buying it here? Call me stubborn. Call me what you will. If I see it back at 6846... Then I'm then I'm thinking, hey, maybe I'll I'll dip in if it holds the one minute VWAP at this point. But again, I feel like I've already missed it. But you'll see what what these VWAPs are are the computer programs showing you where the the normal price. The, the computers love these VWAPs and they'll trade once they go past the one minute. The secret sauce is this multi day VWAP, which I have coded. And generally, they'll gravitate up to that. Whereas a good spot to sell, usually, if you're in from the one minute, you offer out, by the way, Twitter new lows. Um, and you got about 90 cents to go on this stock. Now, if it gets there, and breaks through it, generally you're going to get a parabolic move. But what you want to do is if you're in the stock already and you get to that 7140, you sell 80% and then you put a stop on, I would call it, let's say, you know, you put your stop on at, if it hits 7140, you sell some, or you sell most, and then you put a stop on at the whole number underneath. And then you let it ride. Maybe you get a, maybe it goes green. Who the hell knows? In this bull market that we're in, anything's possible. This stock could be up 10 points by the end of the day. Again, one thing you'll know about me is that I don't, I will never, ever doubt anything can happen. I've seen everything. Stock could go to zero today. Maybe there's anthrax in, uh, unleashed in the, in the hotel. You don't know. Or somebody comes out and wants to buy it out the company from Macaw. Macaw. You don't know what the Macawis are doing. The Macawis. What the hell did I do? What the hell is a Macawi? 
what do you call the people from Macau? Macauis? Holy crap, we're getting smoked on that Joy Global. Damn. Good thing I got 100 shares of that one. All the way back to where we first bought it. Wow. I hate long-term investing. I hate three-day investing. I, I, I'm swear, I swear to God, after three days, I, I really have no clue what the hell I'm doing. It's amazing. <laughs> Market, still think the Qs are going to 143, but you know, that's over the next 465 days. But man, I, if I could hold this stock for more than three days without it giving everything back, it'd be a miracle. That's why I don't hold overnights anymore. I, I just grind it out. Short me some Twitter, find me some UVXY, do a couple of intraday trades, and all a day. Twitter new lows, what's up? Come on. You know you shorted Twitter. Now you cover a little bit here. You better cover a little bit. You got your 15 cents. Again, Amazon reversing? Ooh. I don't trade that stock, but uh oh, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and say Wynn's got a really good chance of getting a 7140. I, I don't know. I'm gonna go out on a limb. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I, you know, you just covered Twitter there at 29.55. That was a nice cover. Fifteen cents, baby. I'll do it all day. I'll do it all day. Especially in a market where I expect it to be choppy, 15 cent profits, I'll take them all day. Look at the Twitter right back to flat. Oh, baby. Nice cover there. And UBXY is not going away. So, did Wynn actually hit 7140 yet? No, just a tad underneath, right? It's a pretty good call, anyway. Again, you know, I didn't do the trade, but, you know, hopefully some of you guys jumped in the win there at 68 or 69 or, or maybe 70 or whatever. Look at that Twitter cover. Look at that win. You got 20 cents to go. You didn't sell some yet. You, you, you could sell here. I, I give you permission if you're in this thing. Don't let five cents. I mean, me and my buddy Jeff Breakstone, I can't tell you how many trades we're sitting there waiting for one price and we miss it by two. There you go. 7140. Come on now. Who's the best trader in the world? I just hand out the winners. That's what I do. Right, MS? You're the freaking man. I know you did that trade. What's up? And that's why I come and hang out with you guys. Because if I'm not doing the trade, at least I could just set it up for you and get you in, get you out. Now, if you're still in it, you want to, you want to, you want to sell, you want to sell it there, seventy-one forty, right? Now you put a stop in at seventy ninety-three, and you hold on to that last lot. Maybe it goes up twenty points from here. Who knows? You put a stop in, who cares on that last 100 shares? Who cares? You're a, you're a winner. Don't let it take your money away. So you put a stop on, and you're golden now. Ripping above the multi-day VWAP. Gone! This is a bull market, people. You buy stocks that are gapped down. I don't care about their numbers or... How many Macaulians are not gambling or are gambling? Takeover rumors. I don't give a shit. This is a bull market, man. You buy stocks when they're gapped down. It's worth it's worth the risk. Especially when they're over the one minute VWAP. Come on. One minute VWAP? Absolutely Netflix is a buy. What, you think that stock's not gonna be back to 150 within like six months? That one's got a little bit, I got a little bit more of a problem with that because it just finally started selling off. Wynn, on the other hand, 
Where's this thing going? Is it going to zero? The stock was 240. It was $50 the other day. You know, where's it going? That's the kind of setup you like. Netflix, if Netflix was coming off a 52-week low and it just got smoked on numbers, I'd say buy it. But this is coming off 52-week highs and it just got smoked. I'm sure it'll be back to 140, 150, 3,000 eventually. But I don't even trade Netflix anymore. So guys, this is what I do, all right? You make a little bit on UVXY, you make a little bit on Twitter. I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed that I didn't even put on 100 shares of the win. But now your day could be done, friendo. Your day could be done. They can't take the money from you. You're a winner. We were dead on with that goddamn Cena and Yoku a couple of weeks ago. Remember that day where the market was tanking and Cena and Yoku just would not go down? And I was like, all right, these are done going down. Damn. It's up 10 points, 12 points on Cena. Damn. I could pick a bottle, man. You're all winners. Jeremy, welcome. I know you're on your cell phone somewhere. Welcome to the party. So that's how it's done. A couple of trades in the morning. I'm a big fan of Price is Right. And there was a woman on YouTube who said she was going to show up this morning to challenge me. I don't think she's here. But when she's here, then this is how what, what happens. Somebody will come in later, and they'll be like, so where's all the reversals? Where's all your picks, tough guy? What's going on? You say you're so smart on YouTube. Where's all your picks? Sorry, you missed it. I don't need to trade now, definitely for sure I don't need to trade. But again, with the UVXY hanging in here, maybe goes green again, the market might get weak, I'll be looking for some ideas. But you do three trades by 1015, and if you can make 280 bucks, and maybe you bought a thousand shares of win when I first mentioned it at 6850, you just made two G's or three G's. I don't know. I'm just here to supply the info. What's up? You want to roll in here at, you know, 1215 on a Friday looking for winners. I'm already, you know, drinking by that. What's up? UVXY, green again. Be nervous. What you should be doing now is questioning what the hell is that multi-day VWAP that you were calling out that win went to? Yeah, that's the secret sauce, kids. Scotty J knows what I'm talking about. The Gator knows what I'm talking about. He's been here for two weeks. This shit works. It's just about having faith. If you don't have faith, you'll never make money. You got to believe something's going to work for it to work. Or you'll just be a nervous wreck. U, V, X, Y. You ain't got no alibi. Uh-oh. Yes. Yes. Look at the win. Oh, the parabolic move above the multi-day VWAP. This thing's going to be up 20 points by the end of the day. Yes, Neil. Yes. By the way, after the multi-day VWAP break on the win, I, I, I don't know. I think it just tacked on another 60 cents. Wow. So you're still in the stock because you never got sold out. So now you raise your stop on that last 100 shares to 71.70. What's up? Now you can't lose money on that last 100 shares. Now you're going to make a little bit more money by holding that last little lot. Or maybe your last little lot was 300 shares. Maybe you had 5,000. Maybe you bought win $70 calls. I don't know. I'm just here to supply the information. By the way, it's only down a dollar now. There's a real good chance this thing's going green, and it's probably going to be a good buy again. U, V, X, Y. You ain't got no alibi. Come on. Did you guys buy it back when it went green? You're up 20 cents. Sell some, for the love of God. Jesus Christ, sell some. Sell some right here, 33, 15. Do it. Don't be a greedy bastard. 
Sell some. 33.18. Even better. That's what you call a reversal. Oh. Don't forget to sell a little bit because you can't make any money if you don't sell. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was a bad sell on my part twice now on UBXY, but yeah, whatever. Whatever. Oh, baby. Notice how the market's pulling in as the UBXY goes up, my friends. Notice... I said, notice. Damn it. All right, so UVXY, even though it's very it's very hard to use stops on this thing, you want to use 33.18 as your stop now if you're still in it. Or let's see where we can get this bad boy to now, now that we're breaking out here a little bit. And by the way, if you bought it, if your first trade of the day was just buying UVXY when it went green, Hello, you're up 60 cents now. What's up, UVXY? You ain't got no alibi. Oh, my Lord, there's clear air for this thing to get to 34.26. Again, it's not a real stock, but let's see if the multi-day VWAP comes into play. I have a target of 33.89 first, then you can get 34.26. But then again, if you did buy it and you're up money, make sure you're selling some because this thing drops 50 cents in a heartbeat for no reason. It's not a real stock. So make sure you sell some, especially at a half number, for God's sake. 33.50, you got to sell some at a half number. Yeah, I got 33.18 as a stop, possible target 33.89. But again, remember. This thing is a bitch. All right, guys, I'm already done for the day. There was one um, gap and go down that I missed. Um, PWR it was a big, big winner today. Beautiful gap and go down. Great example of the gap and go down concept. Um, look at PW. P, uh, PWR. So here you have shock, gap down below support in the direction of the trend indicated by the moving averages, gap down below support and bang right down to first support and then now down to the low of the day. This would be the cover spot. Um, I wish I would have called this one. The one I did call was save which was a good one but not as good as PW, uh, PWR. Um, below support, the reason why SAVE didn't work as well is because SAVE gapped um, below, uh, way below its most recent support. You can see its most recent support was right down here. So it gapped right down to that level, dropped. Um, I do think this one's going to continue to go down later. Um, very, very nice move on that one. Um, as far as uh, PWR uh, goes. Um, the other one that was a really, it was almost the, the best possible gap fade that you can get, and I'm going to show it to you on the one minute chart. Okay, here is a one minute low break. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, right? So there's the one minute low break, right? There's the one minute low break, and then it just fades. That one was a really good winner. I I think I got out a little bit early on this one, but it's fine. You know, take what you can get. This is the daily chart on that. Okay, so here you get the gap up into resistance. It's little blow off spike. Very, very often on a gap up, you get that blow off spike, and then once it breaks below the the low established in the first one minute of trading, or the low established in the first three minutes of trading, or the low established in the first five minutes of trading. By the way, I didn't catch this until here as it crossed over VWAP, okay, that red line is the VWAP line, and, um, and then that was a, a, came right into the prior daily resistance, which was right there at, at uh, 23. My, my cover point was 23.02, okay, 
Okay, now I being me covered at 2308, uh, even though I had initially put my target in at 2302. Um, you know, I upped it just because I wanted to make sure I caught the money. Um, that was a great one. GE, guys, is still a great one in my book, although right now um, the, the greatest play on GE was the buy the one minute break because you got that residual spike on the earnings. And then that was just a short term, really little spike. You look to buy on GE as it fades and fills the gap. It has a tendency when it gaps up, consolidates back into the moving averages. You put this on a 15 minute chart. This 15 minute trend is incredible. No, that doesn't look like my 15 minute charts showing the incredible trend. But on the five minute chart, you can get the gist. Uh, that the trend is up, it just needs to come back to the moving averages mm. for continuation. Um, so, from my perspective, this week I'm just going to do my weekly uh, wrap up. Uh, by the way, I want to look at PGR. Um, so we had a couple of good ones. We had we started the week with a really good one, which was uh, EMC. Um, we, we called the check mark on EMC perfectly. We had a great gap and go down on FAS, and then Kenny called some moves on FAS afterwards. We traded TRIP really well. Um, and um, GE was one that was you know, okay, but uh, Goldman Sachs was a good one. Okay, but it turned out not to be a break below the five minute low. It turned out to be a gap fade. Okay, and that one was a, it turned out to be a gap fade on GE. So that's where the actual live analysis goes. Um, I'm sorry, GS gap fade on Thursday. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to trade it. Kenny called it perfectly um, because I had a network issue here in my office, part of the, the thrills of trading. So there you go. So we had some really good plays. A um, couple of earnings that I thought was, uh, I know that Kenny called a couple of things on JBHT, or at least mention, I heard him mention it. I'll let him fill in on that. A couple of good ones that were from earnings. That's pretty much it. All right. Well, guys, you get the gist. An event for the week. I'm going to end it on a positive note and a nice green note and uh, and call it a week here. Now, next week we have a great trial. Uh, by the way, guys, a lot of you, and you know who you are, are doing absolutely phenomenal. Um, I see a lot, 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 a lot of green on my screen. Speaking about Emery, I'm speaking about Larry, I'm speaking about... Um, uh, Emery, Larry, uh, who, caught, who caught save really well. Hey yeah, guys. Nice uh, save. Right? right? We got a lot of green guys. You're doing a great job. Trade well, everybody. If anybody's interested in joining the professional trader program with us, all you got to do is take the trades we call in the morning and, um, and follow along real tight. Like Gilmore, Gilmore doing great. And I'll catch you guys. Hey guys, if you don't know, I put myself out there on YouTube and I got to deal with a bunch of knuckleheads all the time. At least they're not racist uh, psychopaths as much as they used to be. But again, I know the majority of people enjoy what I do and uh, I, I, I try to help people. But it still bothers me with this one or two schmucks that want to try to rip into me. So if you're not following me on YouTube, do me a favor. If you see somebody putting a, a, a comment up there like this asshole Just Joe or, or somebody else who pretends that he's in the room and that I only give out losers. Um, and I know there's another girl. Well, I don't know if Amanda Torres is in here right now, but, you know, she says she was in here yesterday. She said she was going to come here today. Uh, again, she's probably going to roll in here at 1 o'clock looking for ideas. If she's a real person or not, obviously 90% of people on YouTube are just well, you know what they are. You spend that much time trying to condemn somebody. How great is your life?
I know I picked on that one guy, Greg Mananiero, but that was after he uh, kind of started up with me. So anyway, you saw what I did. You saw what happened. The win trade. You got the one minute. You got the multi-day. You got the multi-day. You, you got the multi-day breakout. Everything I said was what was you should be looking for. You got Hopefully you made some money. You made money on UBXY twice, and maybe you jumped in on the Twitter short. I've done my job. Now I love hanging out with you guys, but remember, I'm in no rush to do anything else now, all right? That's the discipline that you learn after 17 years. You know, I got a guy that said to me, yeah, man, I really do well in the morning, and, and then I just wind up churning my account and giving money back in the afternoon. I don't know what it is. Here's a hint. Don't trade in the afternoon. I just stared at him. Uh, I guess you're right. Oh, no, I'm not right. I'm guaranteeing being right. You just said your problem. You're like an alcoholic. Man, this alcohol drives me nuts. Maybe I maybe I should stop drinking. Maybe you should. I always lose money in the afternoon. Uh there you go, Mr. Analyst, Mr. Psychoanalyst. You just saved yourself money and therapy. You just said it out loud. I, I just always seem to lose money in the afternoon. So go home. You know, he told me, he's like, well, I'm already in the city. I'm sitting here. I'm not going to just pack up. You know, it takes me an hour to get here. And then I'm just, yes, yes, just leave. If you can't sit at the computer without pressing the buttons and losing money in the afternoon, just leave. I come all the way into the city to trade, you know. I, uh, Shut up. You told me your problem. That's what's crazy about this industry. That's what's crazy about me. I had something that was working in 1994. What's up? I've been trading since like 87, really. Put my first trade on in 1988. Started watching the markets, you know, ferociously in 92, 93, 94. I found things that worked back then before the internet boom. I made a ton of money playing reversals on the on the way down in, in 2000. But then my idiotic self, I thought I was a genius. I thought I was an analyst. I started buying dips on companies I didn't know about and decided I wanted to be a portfolio manager, and I got smoked. Well, let's see. What did I make money on doing? Oh, yeah, trading the reversals and momentum. And if, whenever I hold a stock, it doesn't work. Don't hold stocks! But the market seems to always go up. Doesn't matter. You suck at it. Don't do it. And it took a while for me to realize I suck at owning stocks. I do. But I can trade them. The only time I want to own a stock right now is like an FEYE. You know, showed us some decent strength yesterday. You got the reversal. And then you own it for a couple of days. You want to own 100 shares of it now. Maybe it becomes a, a, a you know, gets to 35 or 36. So be it. Days of me trying to analyze a company and buy what I think I know. Come on, I don't know anything. I just know reversals and VWAP indicators. And, you know, and then I spent 2004 to 2007 trying to tweak stuff that, I, that, that, that was, you know, I thought I could enhance my trading and all I did was lose money. And then I tried picking tops. You know, I was great at picking the bottom in 09. I was right there buying stocks like a champ stock market went up every day for nine months i'm like all right that's that's cool let me try to start shorting stocks and i got smoked it wasn't until like three years ago where i was like you know what i think it was after that last monster loss i took on shorting the market i was like you know what how about you just don't do that don't gamble on earnings reports don't hold overnights most people hold overnights because the day trade went bad. If you're going to take something overnight, it's because your trade's going well. 
That's another thing. Write that one down. At 350, if you're still on a stock, why are you keeping it overnight? Because it's against you and you don't want to take the loss? That's usually the situation. Hold on. All right, my Brazilian cleaning crew's here, so we put on some salsa music and we, we dance. Um, yeah, so what I do here is, you, have you ever seen the movie Rounders? Remember the, 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 there's a guy named Kanish. Mike goes to borrow some money from him and he starts scolding him, telling him, I gave you my playbook from all my bad beats. That's what I do. I know everything that doesn't work. There's a thousand things you could do wrong. There's four or five things you could do right. And there's where the discipline comes. Do only the four or five things that work, and you'll be all right. Just because you think a, mar a stock's gone up too much, there's no such thing as too much. Think about the Shake Shack people who are you know, buying and buying and buying, and the shorts that were getting killed. Eventually it popped, but you don't know how far stocks can go. It not, it's not supposed to make sense. The more you realize this is just a stupid video game, and there's a glitch if you guys know Tecmo Bowl, there was a Bo Jackson character back in 1980, whatever, when Bo Jackson was a great player, the video game, that if you played the Bo Jackson character, nobody could tackle you. It was almost like a glitch in the game. But you, if you, if you were playing against somebody who didn't know that, you obviously would take the Raiders, you would give Bo Jackson the ball every, every play and score touchdowns. So I found something that's working pretty well and it really comes down to me not being stupid and trying to pull, you know, do my old stupid trades. Just because rig has bounced, you know, from 11 to 16, who am I to say when this thing's going to stop going up? You know, normally I'd be like, oh, this thing's been up, you know, five days in a row. It's got to pull back. And I, I would short 5,000 shares and, and, and it would go up another dollar. And I don't do any of that stuff anymore. So I'm boring. I just try to make money. By the way, UVXY, I told you to sell some there at the half number. How's that FDYE working out from yesterday? Anybody still in this thing? I sold pre-market, but uh, yeah, that was, oh well. It's the only stock that's moving right now that I'm watching as far as to the upside, FEYE. Again, why did we even decide to buy this thing? And we were talking about buying the $30 calls today. The stock moves on Thursdays and Fridays. I don't know. It's because it's a takeover rumor. It likes to be strong on Thursdays and Fridays. Obviously, it got a little bit of a push today on the upgrade. But there, it made so much sense. We got the intraday reversal off the off a 52-week low. You hold it overnight. 200 shares, 300 shares. You look for a 50-cent pop. Yeah, it's a hundred bucks. Oh, hang on a second. I got actually a, a trade setting up. Ooh, no, I don't. Oh, here's the late here's the latest video. Oof. And from that from that you could sign up to the page. And again, I never promise anybody that anyone's getting rich in here. I just try to make three or four trades a day. And again, if you got $20 million to your name and you wanted to buy 5,000 shares of win, that's your prerogative. I just give you the idea where I think it's going to go. You make it work for you. Probably should have been looking at some win calls, sure. All right. Yeah, Laura, I'll give you a call. I'm sorry I've been slacking on my phone calls. Scotty, I'll give you a call later tonight probably. I had 300 shares of UVXY. Then I bought 300 shares again.
got into Twitter, 300 shares. And of course, the win trade. I will take credit for the win trade. It's just, I don't know what it was about it. Once I missed that 69.50 entry, I, you know, I get a little stubborn. But like I said, I explained myself. I think I explained myself pretty well. I'm being stubborn about this trade. I think you got a chance of it to go to at least 71.40. You probably should be buying it. I, I can't give you an, an, uh, that many, you know, indications of I think it's a great trade. You should be doing it. I, you better be in it. I was just being stubborn about it. So whether or not you look at that as a, a real call or not a real call, some people are like, well, if you didn't do the trade, fuck you. And I appreciate that. I, I mean, I can understand. Well, if you're not doing it, why should I do it? I can't do all the trades, you know? I'm sitting here trying to, you know, I'm staring at my scanner already looking for the next one. And I'm very particular. By the way, look at the win. Very nice trade, guys. I mean, I hope you, you, you sold out. Now it's back to the multi-day. Yeah. Freaking Mike, you're the best student I've had probably ever. You, Doug, Doug's figuring it out. Jimmy McCarthy's figuring it out. I got to beat up Breakstone a little bit more. He'll figure it out soon. Breakstone's a little bit too much like me. Scotty. Scotty's going to be one of those guys. Market's flat right now. We are, you know, Jeremy, thanks for chiming in, by the way. We're kind of just chilling out right now. The market's doing absolutely nothing. I'm a professional non-trader. I only trade the setup. And there are days where there's going to be, all we're going to be talking about in here is movies that we like. All we're going to be talking about is football. All we're going to be talking about is me and my wife's weird relationship. We'll be talking about anything else but trading. And again, when if somebody rolls in and that's all we're talking about, I can understand when they go on, on YouTube and say, oh, I go into his chat room and all he's talking about is his stupid wife and making fun of Arabs. You know, what kind of chat room is this? I'm like, dude, you missed the three trades. What can I tell you? If you're going to come in here for one day and think that's going to be the end-all, be-all of it, you're an idiot. And most of these people that, you know, are idiots. I thought this was supposed to be about stocks. Where? Exactly. When there's a trade setting up, I'll stop what I'm doing and I will let you know. And then throughout the day, this is probably going to be a good day where we could just, you know, talk about Multi-day VWAPs and why the VWAP works. What is VWAP, really? Why does it work so well? By the way, hang on. I got a little Indo. Hold on. I got to check something out. I'll put my charts up in a second. Uh, actually, we missed this one a little bit. But take a look at Pandora. This is something that you don't see too often. You got the one minute and the multi-day like, kind of converging. And then a little breakout above the one minute. And then it went green. So now again, thought process. When I'm looking at a $19 stock, right? The multi-day VWAP is is my uh, well, not my invention, but I have a friend who's been trading VWAP since you know the the invention of VWAP. He's tweaked it and programmed some stuff for Thinkorswim, which is pretty cool. He's a coder. And he's programmed Thinkorswim uh, to give him a VWAP. For more than just a day you get the one minute but then you also have something called we call it the multi-day because it adjusts with your time period and quite often when it breaks a one minute it'll go to the next vwap which is usually let's call it a three-day vwap and then if you look on a five minute chart you get a five-day vwap and then if you're looking for longer term trades it's incredible when you could you could start looking at you know six month vwaps and and uh you know, yearly VWAPs. But again, we'll get into it more and more as uh, you hang. By the way, market's never going down again. I mean, come on. I know I shouldn't say the word never, but this is a bull market, people. We had our sell-off. We had our correction. We had our media blitz of how frightened we should be. It's over, Johnny. It's over. 
Now, again, I'm not really great at owning stocks, but I, that's why I trade the QQQ. If I'm going to own something for a long-term trade, it's always going to be the Qs, always, because then I own everything. If you don't want to pick Apple, Amazon, Priceline, or whatever, buy the Qs. What I do every day, because I've been bullish since August, I've been buying the January 2017 115 calls on the QQQ. Now, again, this is a long-term bullish play, obviously. I think by January 2017, the Qs could easily be 130. My calculations, I got 130 to 143. 143 being the high target. Barring, of course, nuclear war and all the global unrest that we have turning into something else. By the way, FEYE is going to bust out. I think we might actually have to chase FEYE because it always has a nice Friday. Let me see where I can buy it. Uh, I, I feel bad because I sold the stock pre-market and I'm an idiot. But, uh, yeah, I won't buy it until it breaks. If it pulls back to 30, 50, maybe then. But this market, and I'm going to stop talking because I want to find a, well, maybe one more trade. But this market, we had the correction. I don't know what everybody's worried about. The correction that everybody was dying for, we got to have a correction. It came, we got smoked. We corrected, we overcorrected, we had a flash crash. What more do you want? And then we had the jobs report, we tested some of those lows, and we bounced big. What more do you want? No, the emperor of VWAP, he's coded it a little bit. I've never seen what he coded. So, you know. Oh, VWAP, obviously, yeah, you just plug it in on a chart. But that multi day VWAP, I've never seen it before. You got to get it. Thanks, man. You got to get a, you got to get it coded. You can't just click on a button and get that. That's what I mean. I'm sure there's somebody else who has it, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that was just some, uh, just someone flashing 614 on the ask and the spy. I, what, what do you mean? I don't even know. What, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, on the futures, level two, SPY, I don't see it. I think I'm looking at the wrong thing. The SPY stock, is it said 202.48? Are you talking about an ES uh, on the SPY? No, I don't, I don't see what you're talking about. I got, well, they're not, I don't know, what are you referring to, 614? They're at 202.45, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, on the, oh, yeah, I see what you got, yeah. 614, there you go. Now that's just somebody who's got some size, you know. I don't even know. I never even seen checks. I don't know who that is, but let's see if he stands there with the 614. Now he's at 611. I see what you're saying. I don't know nothing about it. And also, I'm never embarrassed to say I don't know what you're talking about. Because, again, I don't know a lot. I've been doing this forever. What I do know is what works. And I know as soon as I sold the FBYE, I was probably going to regret it. Damn it. Swing trades. I should have been looking for to sell it at the close. Oh, well. I kind of screwed that thing up. All right, I'll be right back. Just let me let these ladies do their vacuuming and uh, bull market, man. This this market is uh, it's going higher, going higher. Even if it doesn't go higher today, I, I I see no reason to be afraid until there's a reason to be afraid, and it will all start with the UVXY. So the UVXY has three up days in a row. I I don't think I'll be nervous about buying stocks. As long as you're not buying any Alcoa or some commodity stocks, you, you got a pretty good shot at, you know, 
making some money. Especially with these FBYEs. This is the, these are the trades I'm good at. And again, this was stupid of me because, you know, I, I only had a couple of hundred shares. Really wasn't any reason for me to sell it. I was thinking 3250 by next week. It's just when I see the stock gapped up, a lot of times I want to just sell it and then hope that it pulls back when the market opens so I can buy it back. And I just took it off the screen because I was, you know, in the UVXY in the win. So FBYE, if I could get it to pull back to 3050, maybe I'd dip in again, but I don't think that's going to happen. All right, I'll be right back, and uh, we'll talk more about the VWAPs. So there you go. I mean, just just throwing it out there. Again, this could be it for the day for me. You know, I, I'm a winner. I wish I would have traded some win with you guys. You had the FBYU overnight, UVXY twice. Twitter short, grind out a little bit of money. I shut the computer off. Nobody could take it away from me. All right.